Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to install stone block on a Minecraft server. We're going to be going through everything you need to know to set up a stone block server for you and your friends. We're going to go through everything from getting the server set up, the files you need to download, to even allowing your friends to join the server. We're going to go through it all, but first a message from our sponsor which is Apex Minecraft Hosting. If for whatever reason you don't have enough RAM on your computer to run a stone block server, if you want to make a public stone block server where you can have anybody and everybody join it, or whether or not you just want a simple one-click way to set up a stone block server apex has the solution for you you can go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash apex modded get an awesome 24-hour ddos protected server running stone block with just one click of a button yes you heard that right one click and you can set up stone block on apex check them out again the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash apex modded nevertheless let's go ahead and get on into this and set up stone block all we need to do is go to the second link down below Hello and download the stone block server this is the first thing we got to do here so once you're on this page down here in the bottom right you see this minecraft 1.12 server packs and then there's one here that's labeled r and one that's labeled b we want to get the one that's labeled r right here and click on the gray little download button next to it and it will download in the bottom left we may have to keep this file but most likely it will just automatically download while that's downloading, we also need to download the Twitch app because this is what we're going to use to set up and install stone block. So to download the Twitch app, it's pretty easy. Just click on the uh, download button here. You can find the link to the Twitch app as the third link down below. Once you click that, it will download the Twitch app in the bottom left. You won't have to keep the Twitch app. It is 110% safe. I'll see you guys once both of these downloads are complete. There we go. Both of these downloads have finished. And if we minimize our browser, they are on my desktop right here. If these are on your desktop, go ahead and open your downloads folder. To do that, click the button in the top left of my screen. It's probably in the bottom left of your screen. It will open up this. And then you can type in downloads. Exactly like that, you will have a folder here titled downloads click on that and both stoneblock and the twitch app will be in here drag them to your desktop just for their ease of use once these are on your desktop we need to get the twitch app installed we're going to start with the twitch app get stoneblock installed locally and then set up the server so to set up the twitch app it's pretty easy just double click on it and it will go ahead and open up this handy installer click install and the twitch app will install it really is that simple it should automatically open if it does not go ahead and double click right over here on the left to open up the twitch app now one thing i will say you will need to log in to your twitch account it's pretty simple it's a login box type in your username info all that and hit log in and you'll be good to go then you'll land on this which is basically the home page of the twitch app now we need to go ahead and install Install mods. So basically, just click on the mods button up here, right? So click on that. And then you should have Minecraft here. Click on Minecraft and then just click on install. It'll now go through and install Minecraft. And once it's done, we'll be taken to this page where we then want to go over to where it says browse all mod packs. Then in here, we want to type in stone and then it should show us stone block here. Click on the purple install button on stone block and it will download, install, unzip, do all that stuff with stone block. This may take a minute, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump cut till it's done. Eventually, the download will finish and you'll have a play button for stone block here. We're just going to leave this in the background while we set up our server, so just minimize the Twitch app. We can delete the Twitch setup download we got earlier. Now, let's go ahead and uh, get our stone block server started. So the first thing we want to do is create a new folder on our desktop. So left click, new folder, and then we want to go ahead and title this whatever we want. So we're going to go with just stone block server. That seems pretty easy to me. Stone block server right like that. And now let's go ahead and open this zip file by just double clicking on it. It'll go ahead and open like this. And then we want to take everything that's in this folder right here in this zip file and drag it over into our stone block server folder that we created. So drag everything over there. And uh, once you've done that, we can get the server running. From this point on, it's actually pretty easy. There we go. This is now finishing up. And we can then go ahead, close out of the stone block server folder we downloaded and delete it from our desktop, the zipped one, not the one that you created. Once you've just got the one you created here, go ahead and open it up. And then we want to do a few things. First and foremost, find where it says EULA right here. Double click on that and confirm that you've changed EULA equals false to EULA equals true. So change this to EULA equals T-R-U-E, exactly like that. That is assuming your server isn't going to break the Minecraft EULA here. This one isn't, so we're good to go. Go ahead and click File, Save, and then we can go ahead and close out of the Notepad folder there, 
document we had open. That was the EULA. After we've done that, go ahead and double click on install here. You see that? It should be a Windows batch file. When you double click on that, it'll run itself and then it will probably just close out, which might be a little bit weird, but that's okay. This is going to take a minute. It might look like it's not doing anything, and if you do have any issues with it, you need to run the jar fix and download Java. So let's go ahead and show you where you can get those. So while I was in that jump cut opening up the links we needed, it actually closed out of the install window, which is what we wanted it to do. However, if you do have any issues with the install window, if it doesn't close out, if it just freezes or something, most likely you need to update Java. It's pretty simple to do. Just come up here and then come over to where uh, this is in the description, right? It should just be like download Java. It will take you here where we can uh, get the Java download. It shows you how to pick the correct version and do all this. That's actually the Java JDK, which you need to run Minecraft mods. If that still doesn't work, go ahead and run the jar fix. Pretty simple thing here. Just go here, click the download button, run it. This tutorial goes over everything and then you'll be done and uh, good to go. But nevertheless, the install has closed out here. And now what we want to do is open up our our server properties. You see this? So right click on it and then just go ahead and edit right here. It should open up with uh, Notepad. However, this is a bit hard to read, so I would recommend getting a text editor like Notepad++, where I can right click on this, edit with Notepad++, and it's much easier to read and see. Notepad++ is 100% free, and you can check out the download in the description. But nevertheless, once we're here, we want to go ahead and and make sure that the level type right here is equal to void world. You see that? If it doesn't say level type equal void world, that's fine. Go ahead and make it say that. Just go ahead and type V-O-I-D W-O-R-L-D, right like that. Once we've done that, we're not done in this folder. We we're not done in this file, we need to change server IP. Where do we find that? Well, we need to come up here to the top left for me. It's probably in the bottom left of your screen. Click on that little Windows icon there and then go ahead and type in CMD. Once you've opened command prompt here, or once you have this, you should have command prompt, right click on it and then run that as an administrator. Then once you're in here, you wanna type in IP, C-O-N, F-I-G, IP config, exactly like that, all one word, and hit enter. It'll list out a bunch of stuff here. Now what you're looking for, you may have multiple things here. If you do, it's going to be a bit of trial and error and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But for now, go ahead and take the IPv4 address here. Most likely it's gonna be like 192.168.1.123 or something similar to that. Like like mine is here. Yours may be completely different, but mine is 192.168.1.123, and that's what we're going to copy over here. So 192.168.1.123, exactly like that. Now go ahead and click File, Save, and we are done in our uh, in our folder here, right? We're done in the server properties. Now let's go ahead and port forward. At this point, we could double click on Launch Server, and if you just want to play with like you and people at your house, they can join off of that IPv4 address that you have over here. However, if you want to play with your friend across the street or across the world, you're going to need to do port forwarding. So let's go ahead and do it. The first thing we want to do is find our default gateway here. And this is how if you have multiple numbers here, it's going to be some trial and error. So for me, I know that 192.168.1.1 is the correct default gateway. If you have multiple things here, you might have to try multiple default gateways. But eventually, you should be able to go into your browser here and then just open up a new tab and type in that default gateway, right? Mine's 192.168.1.1 and it will open up some sort of login box. Now it might look completely different from what we have here, but it will ask you for some sort of username and password. If the first one doesn't work and you have multiple ones over here, use the second one, use the third. Whenever you find the one that works, you wanna go back into the server properties file and use that IPv4 address, just to know. But nevertheless, what if we need to log into our router and we don't know the password? Well, we have an article for you that is linked in the description. Just go to thebreakdown.xyz slash router passwords right like so and it will take you to this page where you will be able to go through all the steps and methods to find your router password and i promise by the time you get down here to number five you will have found it now let's go ahead take the router username and password we had and log on into our router now when you log into your router it'll most likely look completely different from what i have but that is perfectly fine we have another tutorial that is linked in the description down below that goes through port forwarding on a ton of different routers. Specifically on this page right here, this video right at the top goes through port forwarding on all of the most popular routers out there right now. So go through it and uh, that should help you out. Even if your router isn't in that video, it's probably very similar to one of the routers that is. 
But nevertheless, let's come back over here and I'll show you how to port forward on our Linksys router and kind of give you some different terms that you will look for in your router. Just a note, as long as you don't apply changes unless it's port forwarding, you have nothing to worry about. Feel free to click around on your router all you want until you find what you're looking for. Now we are looking for port forwarding. On my router here, it is in security. For you, it might be in security. It might be in advanced, advanced. It might be in firewall. It might be in advanced, advanced, advanced. It might be called NAT gaming. It might be NAT security. But once you're in here, for me, it's in security and then it's in apps and gaming, right? Then I have to go to single port forwarding. For you, again, it might be NAT gaming, NAT forwarding, port forwarding, port forwarding slash port triggering, port triggering and port forwarding, whatever it is you're looking for port forwarding, that should have something along the lines of application name, ask you for a few different ports, have some sort of protocol, and have some sort of IP address. However, the IP address might just be called host or something like that. Went ahead and deleted that port forward that was there. Let's go ahead and add a new single port forward. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just gonna name it Minecraft, but really you can name it whatever for external port or anything at all, period, to do with port. You just wanna put 25565. For your internal port, it's asking for a port. As I said, anything to do with a port, you put 25565. For your protocol, you wanna do both, or you wanna do TCP slash UDP, or UDP slash TCP, whatever you do, make sure both are selected. For your device IP here, you wanna put your IPv4 address, which if we come back over here to CMD, was 192.168.1.123, so .1.123. Now we can go ahead and click Save, click Apply, and then click OK. The hard part of starting your server is done. Now we just need to go ahead, minimize our browser, launch up the server by clicking on the launch server bat file here. And then we also want to go ahead and open up. If you get this, by the way, no worries. Windows Defender doesn't know what it's doing with this. It's just a lot of stuff to run at once. So go ahead, click on more info, and you can run anyway. I promise it's safe to run it. I'm running it here directly from their download site. So nevertheless, there we go. That is now running the server. It's pulling in the stuff that it needs. And we can go ahead and launch up Stoneblock from the Twitch app by clicking play here. Once we've got Stoneblock up, we want to make sure that we're adding more RAM to Stoneblock because it does need additional RAM to run. I recommend running it with at least 7 gigabytes of RAM. However, I think you can squeeze by with like 5.5 or 6 gigabytes of RAM. So let me go ahead and get the Minecraft launcher up here. Oh, there it goes. I do need to log in, so let me do that. After I've logged in here, and as you can see, the server is still setting up. It takes a long while. Let's go ahead and click on our little button there. We can click on launch options, and in here we have Stoneblock. Click on that, and I'm going to up the RAM, like I said, to 7 gigabytes, or technically just under 7 gigabytes, about 6.5. You can change that to whatever you want, but I would recommend running it with at least 5.5 gigabytes. Click Save there, back over to News, and I'm going to go ahead and launch up Stoneblock by selecting it and clicking Play. Now, this is going to take a while. It's going to take a while to launch Stoneblock. It's also going to take a while to finish setting up your server. I'll let you know when both are complete. So Stoneblock is opening here as we can see and the server is done because it's unloaded all of the dimensions. When you start seeing unloading dimensions, guess what? The, the server is working. It's up and running. But there's one thing you will see here. Can't keep up. Did the system time change or is the server overloaded? Basically that means you need to add more RAM to your server. As I said on the front end, if you don't have enough RAM, use Apex. This requires a ton of RAM. At least Five gigabytes for Stoneblock, the uh, the game, right? 5.5 gigabytes of RAM and at least that much for the server. So let's go ahead and stop the server by typing STOP in this like CMD window. Hit enter and it will go ahead, close out of that. Now, how do you add more RAM to this server? We'll come down here to where it says settings. See that? Right click on it and then go ahead and click on edit. Once this is open, you will see in here a max RAM value. See that where it says max RAM? Go ahead and change that to however much RAM you want. I have 32 gigs on this system, so I can upgrade this to eight gigs of RAM. That may seem a little extreme, but once I join in as a player, it's going to eat even more RAM as the server and four gigabytes wasn't enough just like running it with nobody in the the game. So once you've done that, click file, save, close out of this. Now we can run the server again with the launch server batch file. Go ahead, double click on that, and it'll say starting Stoneblock server. At this point, it's just another waiting game for Stoneblock to open here and for the server to open again. I'll see you guys once both are finally 
open. One thing I do want to say is that the first time you start your server, you'll see a lot of that. You see that where it says it was red there? You'll see a lot of red the first time you start your server. You'll see less the second time, but it's a modded server. You'll always have red over here, always saying this didn't necessarily work exactly how we thought it would or whatever. And that's okay, right? Modded servers by nature are going to have errors in the console. So don't freak out about it. It's no big deal if that happens. Just a word of warning. Don't think it's a big deal if there's like any errors or issues in your console. It just happens. And there we go. Finally, Stoneblock is open here on our desktop or well on our game, right? And then I accidentally closed out everything in the background. But if we go ahead and open up the server here, the server is unloaded dimensions. Now, as you can see, there's some less errors down here and we're not having that keep up issue anymore. That's because we added more RAM. So now let's go ahead and test join our server. Only you will be able to join your server this way, but it's a good way to test and make sure everything's running. So if we click on multiplayer here and then we go ahead and you can allow access, right? So basically this is saying, do you want people to be able to join your server? Well, yes, you do. So Go ahead and allow for public networks and private networks. Only people you give the IP to will work. Nevertheless, if we go ahead and direct connect here, we can direct connect to our IPv4 address, which in my case was 192.168.1.123, whatever your IPv4 address is, enter it here, and then click on join server. It'll then log us on in to the stone block server. We'll see it pop up over there. Boom, we are loading in and generating everything. And then once we are loaded in, I will see you guys. If it goes not responding like it just did, don't freak out, it's modded, modded, lags, it takes a while, it locks up, but it will make it through, so just let it happen. Okay, so as we can see, as I was logging in here, it said it took me too long to connect, so if we go ahead, back to server list, direct connect, join the server, it will log us on in this time. Don't worry if that happens. Again, modded comes with errors. That's what you need to remember. You're going to have to go through some issues. That's why running a stone block server through someone like Apex is highly recommended over hosting one yourself because of this stuff. This stuff right here won't happen on Apex, but on second join, we get on in. And uh, this looks like stone block to me. We can go ahead and left click, open up all of the quests, start a party, do all of that stuff. So um, yeah, that looks good. Nevertheless, what if we want to let our friends join? Well, if we go ahead and disconnect here, we can then get our public IP address. Now to do this, go to the uh, link in the description down below. It'll be what's my IP, and it will take you over to this. Now on this screen, there's a black box over my IP address, as well as the information over here. So go ahead and uh, just know the reason I'm blocking that is because I don't want you guys to have my public IP. Just like you shouldn't give this out to anybody and everybody. This is just a server for people you trust, your friends and family. If you want a server for everybody, Apex Minecraft hosting is the way to go for that. You can give that IP to everybody, but not this one. This one's only for people you trust. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and copy our IP address here. And by the way, this is all the information someone can get from your IP address. That's why it's blacked out. But if we go back over to Minecraft here and just use the game to cover, uh, cover all of that in the background, we can direct connect, and this time we'll direct connect to our public IP address. We click join server, it'll launch us on in, and if we open up over here, we will see Nick's Games log in. Boom, there it is. All coming through Spick and Span. We might have a similar issue as to what we had a second ago where it kicks us back out, says we disconnected. No, it did not happen this time. We're good. We are in game. Congratulations, you now have a stone block server. Now, if people can't join for whatever reason, most likely there is a firewall on your router blocking your connection. It could also be Windows Defender, but as you can see, it made me turn off Windows Defender when I booted into the game. But again, check your router. Your router is most likely where that firewall is. Antiviruses can also block connections through public IP addresses, so you might want to look there as well. And if none of that's it, it's most likely your port forward and there is an issue with the port forward. Nevertheless, guys, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content exactly like this. Thanks to Apex Minecraft Hosting for sponsoring this video. And if you're just looking for an awesome server to play on, come play on play.breakdowncraft.com. That's our very own server. We have Skyblock. We have 1.13 Survival. It is the best around. Again, come play with us, play.breakdowncraft.com. All the information is in the description below. Nevertheless, guys, again, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'm out, guys. Peace.